right, guys, I am back. Thank you for joining me um, for another video. I wanted to talk to you about Isaiah chapter 66. The Lord brought this to my heart. He brought, he led me to this chapter this morning and it is prophetic. I believe that it applies to us today and what we're seeing in our nation, in our world and what we're seeing among the church. Um, Isaiah 66 is a prophetic book and it just talks about, you know, basically the wheat and the tares. You have those who truly honor God and who worship with spirit spirit by spirit and truth and then you have those who have a form of godliness but they're not truly serving god with their whole heart with their whole mind and their strength and it's so important to understand you cannot fool god he is everywhere he hears everything he sees everything he even knows the intents of our hearts and our thoughts so it always baffles me how people think that they can get around um, the true nature and understanding of where they are in their spiritual walk because God can see and he knows all, you know, that we're never alone and God is omnipresent. That means he is everywhere at all times. And I want to read to you this first verse in chapter uh, 66 of Isaiah. And it says, Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. See, we live in an hour where people really don't fear the word of God. They put their own understanding, they put their own desires above the word of God. And he is not pleased. How can you call yourself a follower of Christ when you don't follow him? Jesus said a very profound thing. He says, why do you call me Lord if you don't do what I say? Am I truly your God? Am I truly the authority in your life? If you don't honor his word, if you don't obey him, then the answer is no. The Bible says delayed obedience is disobedience. So if he asks you to do something and it takes you a month to do it, if it takes you 30 minutes to do something he told you to do now, delayed disobedience is just that. If you ask your child to go and take the trash out and you tell them to go do it now and they decide they're going to do it an hour later, is that obedience? In our society, some people might actually say, well, at least they did it. But that's not how the word of the Lord works. When he asks us to do something, it's time sensitive. And he wants us to make sure that we get that done because it may be something that is depends on your life. It may be a very prevalent word that has to go forth now. And if you're dragging your feet, that can that can definitely delay or cause an interruption of, you know, the word that shouldn't be there. So, you know, it's just important that we learn to obey the Lord. And we don't have to do that in our own strength. We pray to God. We say, God, will you give me the strength to have instant obedience? Will you help me to, to uh, obey your word? I want to be obedient, Lord, but I need your help. And he's so faithful. But you've got to walk this thing out. You've got a part to play. He will help you have the strength, but then you've got to walk it out. You've got to crucify this flesh every day. That means you are allowing the Lord to prune things that need to be cut away. When he says to get rid of it, you put that flesh down, that desire down, and you allow him to renew your mind. If he says, you know what, Marilyn, I don't want you listening to this particular song, you cut it off. If he says, Marilyn, I don't want you to go to this particular place, you don't go. If he says, I want you to go witness to that person and share the love of Christ, you do it. It's just simple things like that that can either delay our walk or it can promote us. 
So we just want to make sure that we are walking according to God's will because in chapter 66, these people had a form of godliness, but they didn't know him. They were offering sacrifices. The Bible says they were offering lambs as if they were like a dog, you know, like a dog's neck cut off. They were offering up to him things that were as abominable as swine. And in the Bible, the, the Lord always sees swine as a filthy, unclean, um, unclean animal. And so when he says swine, you know that it's disgusting. You know that he wants no part of it. It's abominable. And that's how he sees their sacrifices. And I just think, you know, it's so important that we don't give God a sacrifice that we know ourselves is not worthy of God. Make sure whatever you offer to God, it is a true sacrifice. Don't just be giving him anything because you know you want to give him something make sure it's coming from a pure true heart it's actually a offering worthy of the most high god and i want to keep reading to you this right here because it's very important it says verse three he that killeth an ox it is if he slew a man he that sacrifices a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck he that offereth an oblation as if the, he offered swine's blood he that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. You, they have chosen their own ways. Yes, they have chosen their own ways and their soul delighteth in their abominations. That means they like their sin. They've chosen sin over God. They know what God expects. They know the word of the Lord, but they have chosen their own sin, their own desires. They have chosen the flesh. How many are choosing the flesh in this hour? How many want to decide that they know what's best above God's word? They're like, oh, well, God didn't mean that. That was for that time period. Really? Then you're being just like those people in verse 3. You're going off of your own understanding. And listen, this is what God says will happen in verse 4. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. They knew better. They knew it was sin, but they chose it anyway. They chose to turn a blind eye. They didn't want to hear the truth. They didn't want to hear the servants of God. They didn't want to hear the prophets. They wanted to keep living in sin. And God says, I will give them over to their delusion. It's called a reprobate mind. A reprobate mind is when God gives you over to a delusion and you begin to believe that what it is that you believe is truth. And there's a wall and there's no way that you can get in. People may try to penetrate, penetrate that wall to get the truth to you, but you have been veiled because you chose to believe in a lie. And the Lord is patient with us. By the time you get to the reprobate mind stage, it's because God has extended an olive branch over and over. He's tried to tell you the truth. He sent servants, he sent prophets, he sent messengers. And just like they did back in the days of ancient Israel, you kill them all. You get rid of them all. You don't wanna hear them. You push them out the scene. You close your ears, blah, 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 blah. And so therefore he gives you over to what it is that you desire, that delusion. That's scary, y'all. So verse six says, a voice of, I'm sorry, I wanna go back to verse five. It says, hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word, your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy. They shall be ashamed. God is going to lift up his children. He is going to let those know that he loves you. He's going to let people know that the very ones that, you know, cast you away, that mocked you for your faith, he's going to show them how much he has loved. He has loved you. And I just think that is so powerful to understand because when we walk in this faith and we walk in boldness and courage and power, not everyone's going to get it. Not everyone's going to understand. Some people are going to say, oh, that's just too much. That's fanatical. It doesn't take all that. But he says, I will show them how much I loved you and how much he's hated their wicked ways. They're going to be ashamed. He's going to put them to shame before you. 
and you will see it. So I just, you know, in this hour, I pray that if you know you're not walking right with the Lord, if you know he's called you and asked you to do things and put things away and you are dragging your feet, I just pray that you repent. I would pray that you will confess your sins and you will turn back to him while there is still time, while there is still light. It's not too late if you are hearing this video, if you are listening and your heart is pricked and you know that there are things that you need to change in your walk, you know you're not being obedient, to ask the Lord to help you, to ask the Lord to help you to walk in a way that is pleasing to Him. So I'm just going to say a, a prayer with you all really quickly and I hope that, you know, it's something that will, will bless you. Um, dear Heavenly Father, I just lift up everyone that's watching this watching this video, Lord. I pray that you would bless them to have a heart to want to please you, to want to obey you, to desire your word, to desire to to please you, Lord. I pray that they would have a thirst and righteousness and a hunger to study your word, Lord, so that they can know the word of God to apply in their lives so they can stand on your word as the authority in their life that they stand on the word of god and not this world's wisdom but they would lean to you lord i just pray dear heavenly father that you would cleanse our hearts cleanse our minds draw us back to you father so that we would not walk in darkness but we will walk in the light lord i thank you for every person that's watching and i pray that you would bless their lives lord i pray that you would give them favor and i I pray that you would lift their families up for all those who they are crying out for who are lost who they want to see saved lord we know that you are our savior you are our salvation father and i just pray dear heavenly father that you would do a mighty work and a healing in our life lord you are jehovah rapha you are our victory of banner jehovah nisi you are the great i am lord and you are our salvation so lord i lift your name up i magnify you and i exalt you and i thank you for the victory in advance in jesus mighty name we pray Amen and amen. You all have a blessed day and I will talk to you soon. Love you. Bye.